Good afternoon. Happy to be back with you this week. And today we're going to look at policies. Why do we have policies and which policies should we have in our blended or online learning environment? Um, and you can see from the little drawing that I've got there that policy and institutional structure are just part of all the practices that we need to set in place. So we've looked at curriculum, we've looked at professional development, we've looked at learning support, we've also um, looked at partnerships. We need to perhaps look a little bit more into research and evaluation one of these days. But for now, we're going to look at policies. Now, um, so why policies, which policies, uh, look a little bit at institutional policy on blended or online learning. Okay, so for implementation to succeed, that's the basic uh, departure where we need to leave. For implementation to succeed, it needs to be based on policy. So my first question would be, which policies are in place? And uh, I want you to start first at the national level. I suppose there's a policy on ICT, there's a policy on education, or there are various policies on education. Is there a policy on blended learning? Is there a policy on online learning? You know, perhaps that because of the pandemic today, your um, policymakers are looking into such policies, but do they already exist or not? And then at institutional level in the schools or institutions where you are working, do you have some of these policies in place and are they properly implemented? Questions will be who makes those policies and why do we make policies and which policies or which components are useful uh, when it comes to blended or online learning, but also to open educational resources and open educational practices. So why policy? First of all, let us think about what an institutional policy is. We can briefly define it as a plan or course of action developed by an institution to guide what it does. So in general, we can say that a policy guides decision making and service delivery. It ensures that principles are understood and implemented so that we all have the same principles that guide us. It enables a shared communication because we will be using common language and a common understanding of the principles we want to apply. A policy creates an operating framework, so it ties everything together into one plan of action. So that means it also ensures consistency of approach and it addresses different requirements and therefore also mitigates risks. Once there's a policy in place, we know what to do, we know what to follow when certain things occur. So a blended learning policy might need to address a whole section of areas. There might be um, an element of that speaks to management and the organization as such as the structure. So then it would determine the fit of blended learning within the stated goals and priorities of the institution, of your school, of your specific department, if you want to get it at that level. Also uh, establishing approval processes and criteria. So that would be regarding whether or not a specific course or a specific program would be delivered via blended teaching and learning. Uh, it would also offer support for the development and delivery of the blended learning, and it would establish ownership of intellectual property. And I would like to underline here that the move, the international move, is definitely uh, towards open access and open educational resources, which can be freely shared, uh, remixed, revised, redistributed, etc. So your blended learning policy might also have a section on your teaching staff or your academics, if we are looking at a tertiary institution or a university. So then that section would establish criteria to assess uh, equivalency or parity of the blended courses with the non-blended if such other courses remain. It would also establish criteria to determine, for example, your workload uh, in a blended uh, environment. 
how much time, how much effort would you be spending on the development of the course and also on the delivery of the blended course. And finally, well, there might be other points, but I have highlighted these three important sections. Finally, your blended learning policy uh, might have to address issues regarding to students. And then we are talking mainly about address uh, access issues. Are all your learners able to access the uh, resources, the activities, the, the, the blended learning that is found online? Uh, it would also need a section on how to orient and support your students in using the technology uh, for accessing the blended courses. One of the very, very good um, open access um, templates that exist are those of the Commonwealth of Learning. And if you haven't been on their website yet, I would really encourage you to go to their oasis, oasis.col.org. Um, which is the repository of the Commonwealth of Learning, which has a variety of open educational resources, among which is a template for an institutional open education policy, open educational resources policy, but also one for a blended or online learning policy. So those ones would be very good if you want to assist your institution, your school, to make sure that a policy is drafted and is afterwards implemented. So once again, I hope you have enjoyed this short presentation. And of course, I look forward to your comments and questions on the Moodle platform. And this time you will find a question on the Moodle platform. I am asking you to go and look for uh, a blended learning or an open educational resources policy and uh, discuss what are the components, what is it looking at in particular, and also examine whether that particular um, policy can be used in your specific context, in your specific school. And with that, it's bye-bye from me, and see you soon.